everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you everything in my travel first aid slash medicine kit. So I have this little pouch just hanging around the house. I just felt like it was like a good small size. I have an EpiPen. This is one of those things that I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I do have allergies but not like anything that an EpiPen would probably be needed for, but my husband does. We've never actually had to use it, but we should have used it one time because he did break out in hives bad enough that we had to go to the ER. And once we got there, the doctor was like, do you have an EpiPen? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, well, why didn't you use that? Because you really probably should have. Then we just have these two little plastic bags full of some stuff. I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I read a lot of vlogs of what is like good to bring with you when you travel, like first aid kits, and this was sort of like a hit or miss. I've never had to really use it while traveling, but it is very small. This is a thermometer, by the way. I don't know, like I just feel like it's kind of a smart thing to have with you, especially if you're in a hotter climate than you're used to and you don't know if you're like actually just like your body is hot or you're running a fever. I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's sort of a smart thing to have. We'll see if I actually ever need it. I also have some moleskin. Moleskin's really good for if you are starting to have a blister, then it just helps not to rub. I'm also bringing Neosporin. I feel like this is a very basic thing to have with you, an antibiotic pain relieving cream. I also have three of these antiseptic wipes. And then we have this sting relief antiseptic pain reliever insect bite, four band-aids, which will probably be enough for whatever thing that we need, and then if you need more, then you can go to a pharmacy. I cut some of these up just because it's smaller and more compact, but then I wrote it down on here just like which specific thing is for and how many tabs and how often. So I have Banofen, which this is an antihistamine, allergy, hay fever, common cold. And you take one tablet every six hours. So I have three of these. Next I have these. They're actually the same thing, but it's just different packaging. This is Aperdine, I believe that's how you call it. But it's basically for colds, decongestion, antihistamine, watery eyes, three, four, five. I have five of those. And then I'm bringing some Mucinex. If you're really congested and you want to like hack it all up, I know that's kind of like gross to say, but we all know what a loogie is, so there you go. It just makes your cough more productive. You're not like coughing like, like a cat, you're coughing like a, like a bear. What analogy is that? Then we just have a few of these for sore throats. Then I'm also bringing these little Pepto-Bismol tablets. Also bringing DayQuil. This is the tablet form. To me, DayQuil is the best thing that just seems to always work whenever I'm not feeling well. Next, I'm bringing a few of these. I'm obviously not bringing this entire box, but if you don't know what these are, they come in these little pouches and it's just vitamin C for antioxidants, vitamins, electrolytes. I'm, re I'm probably only gonna bring enough for being on the plane or being in the airport just to have a little bit of vitamin C when you're in. Cause airports are, they can be like where the sickness just starts. So bringing a few of these, definitely not the whole box. I wish I had the thing with me so I can like show you, I guess I'll, I'll put a picture right here of sort of what I'm going to do. I'm bringing Pepto-Bismol because nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Never see that commercial anymore. And then I'm bringing one specifically for anti-diarrhea. You know, it's a very real thing. If you're traveling, then it's an issue that can hit a lot of people. Hence why there's names like Montezuma's Revenge or Bali Belly. We're all adults here. You know what sickness is. The one thing that you can't control. You can walk 10 miles with a headache. You can walk 10 miles sneezing, blowing your nose, hacking up loogies, but you can't walk 10 miles and have diarrhea. So, so the next one that I am bringing is stool softener. Again, let's talk about poop. It's very, very common for people to get backed up when they travel. You're trying so many different foods, you are doing different activities, and your body is responding differently. And Sometimes you just get stuffed up and if you can go three, four days without relieving yourself, your stomach starts to get bloated, your stomach starts to hurt and again, it just 
it's not a good way to feel when you're on vacation or when you're traveling. The next one that I want to talk about is naproxen and ibuprofen or Advil or Tylenol or anything that's a fever reducer or a pain reliever. This is something that my husband and I, I don't want to say take a lot of, but we definitely go through what we bring whenever we travel, whether it's like our feet hurt, our backs hurt, sunburn, headaches. I'm filling up two little slots in that vitamin container thing full of ibuprofen. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of melatonin. We tend to travel really far, like 20 or more hours to our destination. And that can really mess with your sleep patterns. Melatonin, it doesn't like knock you out, make you go to sleep, but it helps promote sleep and kind of like get your sleep clock back in track, if that makes any sense. The last thing that I am bringing is just some more Tums. This is just for acid indigestion and heartburn. We're obviously not taking all of these pills in the bottles. We're just taking like however many can fit in a little square on the vitamin capsule. So it's really not that much. It just kind of seems like a lot because I'm showing you the entire bottle. I also forgot to mention this. It is 98.11% DEET. It literally melted the paint off my previous dining table because I like sprayed myself while standing next to it. It melted the paint. It's like unusually strong. It's kind of intense. I've seen other people show their travel first aid kits and they're showing like gauze, medical tape, tiny scissors, tiny splints, sewing kit for stitches. And I'm like, I really don't think I'll need that. I don't see myself like falling off a cliff breaking an ankle and needing stitches. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't see that realistically happening. So I feel like this is a kind of a realistic assortment of things to bring. So that is everything that I'm taking when it comes to my little first aid kit slash medicine. Everything that I showed you is going to fit in this little pouch. No, that's kind of hard to believe with everything that I showed you, but I've tried it and I fit it all and it's very compact and small. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye! Yeah, it's a hot day. I'm hanging in the sunshine.